जय जय श्री राधे श्री वल्लभाधीश की जय हो सभी वैष्णवन को सादर सप्रेम जय श्री कृष्ण जय जय श्री राधे टुडे इज द थर्टी एट्थ डे ऑफ द श्री चौरासी वैष्णव वार्ता रीडिंग इन इंग्लिश वार्ता ट्वेंटी एट द स्टोरी ऑफ गोपाल दास फ्रॉम बांसवारी Bhav Prakash This Gopal Das is a sakhi of Sri Yamuna ji named Ras- Rasa Prakashika When she speaks with the other devotees all of them feel the light of love in their hearts Here Gopal Das was born into a Kshatriya family his family his father was a businessman and ran a banking service for working men Before Gopal Das four other sons were born into the family but all of them had died The Kshatriya thought to himself that If Gopal Das lived then he would perform the ceremony of his first haircut shaving the baby's head in Prayag Gopal Das reached the age of 5 but his father was so busy with his work that he did not even manage to go to Prayag Gopal Das turned 11 when his father organized transport and told his manager to take the boy to Prayag have his head shaved and quickly come back home when he would arrange his marriage This is how Gopal Das left Bansawari He came to Prayag and had the sight of the Ganga river he was the divine soul and so he saw the spiritual form of Sri Ganga ji he told the manager i will not have my head shaved here on the banks of this so holy river i will have to go at least 5 miles away in order to cut my hair otherwise i might go to hell for the offence of throwing my hair into this holy river full of the nectar of love vicharaniya bhakti Otherwise I might go to hell for the offence of throwing my hair into this holy river full of the nectar of love. The manager tried over and over to persuade him saying that these were his father's instructions. Gopal Das said, "My father is an idiot to believe such things. Anyway, I do not need any such pious reward and the Brahmins only make these things up to keep the customers coming. I will never allow my hair to be cut off here." Gopal Das has his head had his head shaved in Gangapur some 5 miles away. and then returned to prayag to bathe he gave away some money in charity and worshiped shri yamuna ji and shri ganga ji with sandal paste and flowers and stayed there for 5 nights gopal das went to the rivers every day to offer worship shri acharya ji had come there and on the 5th day took his bath close to where gopal das was He recognized the boy as a divine soul and wanted to grace him. Gopal Das was bathing and at that moment Sri Acharya ji took water in the palms of his hands and poured it onto Gopal Das's head. As he did so Gopal Das realized his true identity and also Sri Acharya ji's true form. Gopal Das bowed his head to Sri Acharya ji even as he was in the water. With his hands folded he entreated, "O oh, Maharaj, I am too sinful and have been wandering around this world for far too long. Please grace me now." Seeing Gopal Das's humility Sri Acharya ji initiated him with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandha even whilst they were still in the water and established the principles of the path of grace in his heart. He told Gopal Das to henceforth worship the Lord. Gopal Das came out of the water and put on some clean clothes. Sri Acharya ji also put on his pure clothes and sat down to perform his afternoon oblations. He then instructed Gopal Das to find a swarupa of the Lord and thereafter to come to our lel. He then left for Arel himself. Gopal Das purchased a swarupa of child Krishna and also went to Arel. Sri Acharya ji bathed the swarupa in the five nectars and gave him to Gopal Das ji's responsibility. He stayed there for five days and learned all the ways of seva of the Pushti Marg. He then took leave of his guru and returned to Bansawari. The manager told Gopal Das's father everything that had happened that they had gone 5 miles away from Ganga ji to do the head shaving even though he had advised against it. He also told him that Gopal Das had become a Vaishnava. Gopal Das's father told the manager not to say anything and he himself kept quiet. So affectionate to him were his mother and father. They did not want him to leave home. They therefore said nothing to him. His parents then said he must be hungry and so should eat something. However, Gopal Das they said that from now on he would not even drink water from their hands and so they should also go to Sri Acharya ji to get initiated. If they did not want to do so then he would make his own arrangements and stay there. He even offered to live in a tent. His father asked him how this would work for now it was time for him to get married. 
Gopal Das said it would be better if they first arranged for a place for him and after that the other matters could be broached, although at this time he would not think about marriage. His father did just this. Gopal Das cleaned the place, cooked and made the offerings, then took Mahaprasad. He made arrangements in his Sri Takuji's place of worship and made lots of loving service. Sometime after Gopal Das's father got him engaged and married, but he refused to eat or drink from anyone's hand in his father-in-law's family and even his own family. He told his father, please go to Sri Acharya and be initiated. If you cannot, I will take my wife there to be initiated. His parents gave him money to take his wife to be initiated because they thought that they would not be able to keep up with demands of the blessed path. Gopal Das told his wife that she should become Sri Acharya's disciple and give up eating with their family and that only then would he be able to mix with her freely. The wife was willing to be initiated but not to give up eating her parents' food. Gopal Das considered it best to, le- to at least get her initiated and that she would be much elevated through this process and soon follow the righteous path. He sat his wife in a cart and they set out for Prayag. They then travelled on to Adel and met Sri Acharyaji. Gopal Das bowed low, low to him and informed him that despite his efforts, his parents did not want to be initiated. However, he had brought his wife with him, and so would he please initiate her and bless her. Sri Acharyaji told him that his wife was not a divine soul, that he would not initiate her. She cannot sustain the life of a Vaishnava, and she will insist on eating here and there. I will let her hear the Lord's name from me. However, anyway, through your association, your parents and your wife will be uplifted, but none of them is related to the eternal Leela and will never be. Gopal Das said it would be best for his wife to at least hear the Lord's name. Sri Acharyaji did just that for her. A few days later, Gopal Das went to ban- back to Bansawad and began to serve his Thakurji, his Sri Thakurji. Part 1 Gopal Das set up a resting house near his front door for travellers that he met in the street. Anyone who came there was welcome to stay. His thought was that in his village there were no Vaishnavas to whom he could really relate and discuss divine discourses with, and so by establishing this place he might be able to meet a Vaishnava or two. He called this place a a house for rest, not a dharamsala literally house for comfort of the righteous, because the use of the latter word implied some kind of righteousness on the path of the owner. Thinking of the reward for any seva is an obstacle in the path of grace. Thinking of the reward for any service is an obstacle in the path of grace. Part 1 continued. Travellers would often come there to stay the night or so. Gopal Das went there every evening and asked them all if they needed anything. He brought food for the hungry, took Vaishnavas to his home for prasad, or to stay for a few days. If anyone was penniless, he gave them some money. One day, Padmaraval Das, Padmaraval Das, the son Chora Brahman, came there. Gopal Das asked him who he was, where he was coming from, and where he was going. Padmaraval answered, I am a Sanchora Brahmin and I have great attachment to Sri Krishna's form as Sri Ranachora Lalji. One of my clients, Mavji Patel, lives in Ujjain. I am going there to collect some money from him and then I will be going to Sri Dwarakaji for the holy sight of my beloved Lord. Hearing these words, Gopal Das recognised Paramarabal to be a divine soul and began to chat with him on the grounds that if he were to have as much affection for Sri Acharyaji as he did for Sri Ranachoralaji, then he would surely be fulfilled. Having thought this, he addressed the Brahmin, Does your Sri Ranachoralaji ever speak with you? Does he speak with anybody? asked the Brahmin. Please tell me. Gopal Das told him that near Prayag in Ardell, there lives Sri Balabhacharyaji. Sri Ranachoralaji has appeared in him. He speaks and converses. The Brahmin asked Gopal Das, If I go there, will he let me see Sri Ranachoralaji? Gopal Das told him that Sri Acharyaji would let him have the holy sight of Sri, Sri Ranachoralaji and that he would also speak with him. The Brahmin became extremely impatient to leave for Arel. Oh, when will Sri Acharyaji appear to me as Sri Ranachoralaji and speak with me? Gopal Das then went home. That night, Padmarabal could not sleep. He only thought about when he would be able to go to Ardell. He got up in the morning and left immediately, reached Ujjain in a few days' time. Mavaji Patel inquired of him, You have returned to Ujjain quite soon after your last visit, and you seem to be excited about something. What is the reason for this? Padmarabal explained, Sri Nanachoralalji has manifested in Ardell. He even talks to everyone. I will go there tomorrow morning. 
Mabaji then said that he would like to go with him too to have the site, holy site of Sri Ranchodalaji. Padmarabal replied, Mabaji, you are used to a wealthy lifestyle and I am going on foot. It would not be a practical journey if you travel with all your retinue. Mabaji said he would just walk together with Padmarabal and so the latter told him to get ready for they would set out in the morning. Mavji Patel went home and told his wife Virajo that he was going to Adel in the morning with Padmarabal. There, he said, Sri Acharyji appears at Ranshodalaji and speaks to everyone. Virajo said that she also wanted to come, but Mavji asked her how far would she be able to, how she would be able to walk that far. She assured him that she could go on foot with him. Mavji Patel then went went to Padmarabal and told him that his wife now wanted to come with them and reassured him that she had promised to go on foot with them. OK, let's go then, all three of us, said Padmarabal. Mavji went home and finished the preparations. He arranged for a guard for the home and they all set off for Adel, Bhav Prakash. They were all divine souls and so they felt very impatient for the chance to see Sri, to see Sri Acharyji. In the eternal Leela, Padmarabalji is part of the Dwarka pastimes, being a Saki of... Sri Rukminiji. Once when Sri Takuji was jesting with Sri Rukminiji, she fainted and fell to the ground. Sri Takuji was trying to revive her. That Saki, Padmarabal, whose name was Vimala, stood there laughing. Afterwards, Sri Rukminiji admonished her. I fainted and you just stood there. Sri Takuji had to help me. And what were you doing? Sri Takuji had to tidy my hair and wash my face and I should not make him have to do such things. I am supposed to serve him and not the other way round. You are with me for this purpose, so why did you leave Sri Takuji to do it? Sri Rukminiji said all of this, but that Saki still just stood there smiling. Sri Rukminiji became angry and cursed her to fall to earth, saying that she was no longer her Saki and that she was useless. This is how Vimala came to be Padmarabal, and this explains why he had such a t- attachment to Sri Ranachodalaji due to his previous relationship with him. Mavji Patel and his wife Virajo are both Sakis of Sri Chandrabaliji in the Vraja pastimes. Mavji's name is Rupa and Virajo's name is Haraka. They are therefore both very attached to Sri Gosaiji and the pastimes of Vraj. Part 1 continued. They took four or five men with them. Soon they arrived in Prayag. They stood there and looked across at Adel, all wishing that they could cross the river Yamanaji. At that moment, Sri Acharyaji came to the far bank of the river to perform his midday prayers. He saw them all standing there and instructed one Vaishnava to take the boat over to fetch them all. Tell them that Sri Ranchodalaji has sent the boat for them, he said. Be quick. The Vaishnava took the boat across and asked which one of them was Padmarabal. Mavji and Virajo, the three of them, said... These are our names, they replied. The Vaishnava told them, they replied. The Vaishnava told them that Sri Ranachodalaji has sent the boat for them and so they should quickly sit in it. The three of them were so happy to hear this and thought, truly, Sri Ranachodalaji has appeared. We had only just arrived when he called us all by name and sent, us, uh, sent a boat for us. They were so excited as they sat in a boat to cross the river. They all went to have the sight of Sri Acharyaji and he, knowing that they were also attached to Sri Ranchodalaji, let them see him in that form. The three of them bowed down low. Padmarabal said that it was through the blessings of Gopal Das that they were now having his sight. Gopal Das also told us that we should become your disciples. Please therefore accept us as your disciples, for we have taken shelter in you. Sri Acharyaji told them to bathe in Sri Yamanaji, which they did, and he then initiated all three of them with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandha. He then took Padmarabal into his home and went off to take his meal. Padmarabal thought to himself that he would like to see Sri Acharyaji take his meals as Sri Ranchodalaji and that he would then like to have some of the leftovers. Knowing his mind, Sri Acharyaji called him inside and there Padmarabal witnessed Sri Ranchodalaji enjoying the offerings. He was so happy. Then Sri Acharyaji asked him whether his doubts had now had all now been dispersed. Padmarabal humbly replied, <coughs> O oh, Maharaj, I am an embodied soul and my intelligence is little. This is why my mind was going over such thoughts. You are Sri Ranchodalaji himself. After finishing his meal, Sri Acharyaji gave him the leftovers. He served Mavji and Viraja with some as well. Having take, partaken of this Mahaprasad, <coughs> they all came to see Sri Acharyaji again. They asked him to tell them what they must now do. Sri Acharyaji told them to serve the Lord. Padmarabal made the following supplication. O Maharaj, I would like to serve Sri Ranachodalaji without end and constantly with the same enthusiasm that I have for your sight. Then I will be able to serve, otherwise not. Sri Acharyaji reassured him that his heart's desire would be granted. 
<coughs> Bhav Prakash. Only then would he be able to return to the Dwaraka pastimes and his beloved Sri Ranshur Lalji when Sri Takuji fulfills his wish in this way. So this is where we conclude the Varta for today. We will continue with the story of Gopal Das in tomorrow's reading and then proceed to the story of Padmarawal. Varta 29. Shri Valabhadish Kije, Shri Gusaiji Kije. Supreme Sadar Vaishnavanko Sab Jai Jai Shri Krishna Radhe Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai Ho Radhe Radhe